Sobol 3D sent me their SV01 Pro 3D printer to test it. Inside the box are user manual, roll of the white PLA, accessories pack and printer parts. SV10 Pro is mostly pre-assembled, so the assembly is very easy and it takes a little time to do it. Before I assemble it, let's see what's inside the accessories pack. We have some zip ties and end caps, card reader and micro SD card, some tools, extra nozzle and nozzle cleaning tool, 4 bolts, power cable, cutting pliers and spatula, which has no use if you have flexible build plate. It's almost assembled, you need to attach two frame parts together with 4 bolts. Filament holder looks the same as the Ender 3 S1 Pro has, but this one does not have the rolling part. I like this kind of filament holders which don't need any screws to fix it in place. I need to plug some connectors and install the screen and it and I have finished the assembly. SV01 Pro has metal direct drive extruder, which is good for printing flexible filaments. Big fan for cooling. This printer also has auto leveling, which uses sear touch. X and Y axes have belt tensioners. Z axes have two lead screws and two motors. Before I start the printer, I will check if some things need adjustments. The belt was a little bit too tight, but no other adjustments needed. The screen has option to choose between day and night theme. The interface is very user friendly, simple and easy to use. You have option to change different settings. This 3D printer has auto leveling, which uses sear touch. Auto leveling works great, no problems with it. First you need to level manually and after that you use auto for better result. Build plate dimensions are 280 by 240 by 300 mm. After the auto leveling is done, you can see measuring values on the screen. To preheat, you can set temperatures manually or use a preset for PLA and ABS. Preheating time is around 2 minutes, which is quite fast. On the memory card are some pre-sliced files which you can print. If the settings are correct, it's very easy to remove prints from a flexible plate. My C height was set to clo too close to the bed. The prints will stick very well and it's difficult to remove them. The power usage when preheating is around 360 watts and during printing is around uh, 130 watts. I also measured how much uh, kilowatt hours it will take to 3D print 3D Pensy and it was about 0.17 kilowatt hours. 
One thing if you choose 3D printers is also the noise level it makes. This printer makes around 50 decibels. It's not the silent one, but not bad. Most noise is made by cooling fans. I did quick heating bed measuring. The results aren't 100% accurate, but you can see the differences. The middle looks to be much higher than corners. Under the bed is insulation, which covers the, the middle parts, not the corners. Maybe this causes the lower temps at the corners. The insulation is good add-on, but it could be on the corners also. Newer 3D printers mostly have filament runout centers, so I tried if it's working correctly. All worked as it should, but when it started printed again, it was not aligned with the print anymore. I thought maybe I didn't change the filament fast enough and stripper motors were turned off, so I tried one more time. Second time it worked great and no more layer shift. This printer also have resume printing future when power goes out. I tested it and it worked as it should. First print was the cube. The quality is good. I only had the C offset wrong and the first layer was too squeezed. The second cube is when I tested the filament runout sensor, the one which had the shifted layer. And the C offset was also off. This one is a second try of the filament sensor resume printing, no layer shift. You can see the place when resumed, but it's not bad. It also depends where your print post. First ABS cube has cracks, but when I lowered cooling fan speed 50% it was perfect, very good quality. Corners are a little bit warped, but it can be avoided by adding prim. PTG cube perfect, no problems at all, sticked very well and was easy to remove. This direct drive extruder does great work with the flexible filaments. All the cubes were printed same settings except PLA. PLA had lower temperature. 3D Benji came out very good, amazing results, it's one of the best benches I have printed. Bottom is little bit too squeezed, I used default settings, no problems with overhangs, little bit uh, strings. Very consistent layers. With this print you can see there are no ghosting and layers are very nice. I usually like to test waste mode. I choose this cool waste, but it has too much overhanging pl places and it has holes in it. The waste also has small blobs, which could be caused by the rescaling and too fast printing speed. So I tried another waste with lower speed and it came out good as other prints. Polytower had some problems with the bridging, but overall very good results. I printed two rooks at once to see how the is the print quality when the extruder moves one part to another. One of the rook was modeled to print with resin printers. That's why the drain hole at the bottom. And that's why it has some overhangs on the top of the part. 
Next print I did was Flexifactory Alien, came out very nice, model quality is very good and also print quality. I have tested different 3D printers and I can say the print quality is very good. You can get consistent good prints and it's one of the things I like about this printer. Second one is the price, it's pretty cheap. Printer is very easy to set up and the quality out of the box is very good. I used default print settings and it worked nicely. The print size is a little bit bigger than others in this price range. I also like the fast preheat time and build plate sticks very good. It could be a little more silent but the print quality compensates it. I definitely recommend it. Thank you for watching, more info about the printer in the description.